lot to cover. We have a lot to cover today. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start our song. And then as, if anybody else joins us, they can uh, catch it as they come. What happened? He said, this is my body as he held up the bread. Each time you eat of it, remember broken for you just like the bread my body broken just for you and this is my blood he took the cup and said each time you drink of it remember that it's a token of the blood I shed or take the cup I pour for you A new covenant I give to you Poured out my love so you could live my life Always remember that I died for you When you eat of the bread and drink the wine He said, this is my body as he held up the bread Each time you eat of it, remember That I was broken for you just like the bread My body broken just for you And this is my blood he took the cup and said Each time you drink of it, remember That it's a token of the blood I shed Oh, take the cup I pour for you A new covenant I give
was beautiful. Oh my goodness. Oh good. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Beautiful. Um okay. So I figured today we'll uh just jump into the contemplations. And I actually did not do much contemplating today. Um, because <laughs> I was preparing to do the little mini Passover uh last supper rehearsal dinner feast with y'all. So um anyway, so let's jump in. And uh, so I figure we'll be going back and forth between the contemplation readings and then also doing the Last Supper sacramental liturgy. Um, so did you all get my email about what to bring? Yep. Cool. Great. Um, okay. So I also want to read the passages and then um, before we contemplate them because that'll help with fitting into the story. So um, does anyone want to read the preparing for the Last Supper for us? Do you have it in front of you? I could read this one while you all pull it up or whatever you need to do. Unless we have a go ahead, go ahead and read it because I don't have it. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so this is from Luke 22, 7 through 13. Jesus sent for Peter and John and instructed them, go and prepare the Passover supper so we can eat it together. They asked him, where do you make the preparation? Where do we make the preparations to eat the meal? Jesus gave them the sign. When you enter the city, you will find a man carrying a jug of water. Follow him home and say to the owner of the house, the teacher told us to ask you, where's the room I may use to have Passover meal with my disciples? He will then take you to a large, fully furnished upstairs room, make the preparations for us there. They went and found everything to be exactly like Jesus had prophesied, and they prepared the Passover meal. Did anyone choose that as a contemplation? Nope. Okay. I I just had a, a couple things. Um, from that, even though I didn't really do contemplations today, I, I imagine that the Holy Spirit actually gave Jesus a vision of where to prepare the Passover supper. And then I was also imagining that the Holy Spirit gave the owner of the house a dream of the disciples and Jesus eating that, um, I guess I should say the last supper rather than the Passover meal. Is that what I said? I'm not sure. The last supper at his house. And I imagine that he was thinking about it all day up until the disciples found him and then he was excited and just honored to <laughs> be able to host them. That was my thought. Um, any, any other thoughts, comments? No, I'll just comment. I think that's a beautiful thought, a beautiful way of, of kind of putting it together. I like that, mm. what you said. Thanks. Um, okay, so we're actually going to jump into the mini Seder. Did y'all either print out or um, have that handy? And I have to say, I had a really busy day today and I couldn't do any preparations, couldn't go to the store, couldn't get anything. So okay. I'm not very much into, I mean, I'm not, I'm very much into listening, but not participating. Okay. Well, you can imagine that you're eating and drinking things. Yeah. <laughs> and Kathy, will you tilt your camera down a little bit? We can't see your face, oh. actually. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Were we going to open with uh, with uh, the grace? Yes. Thank you. Father Barber, will you lead us in prayer? Good. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dearest Lord, teach us to desire you with our whole heart and soul. So that the desire of you may seek and find you. Having found you, we may love you. And loving you may hate everything that separates us from you.
Lord Jesus, give us grace to love you, you deserve, to serve you and do not count the cost. You pay the price for our life, our real life, the life that no one will take from us. We are reflecting on that today. We are also living it out in our lives. As we go into the passion, we pray that we may share that passion with Christ. That we may be sorrowful with Christ in sorrow, in his sorrow. We may feel as he felt. And we end the prayer this morning with the, with the prayer from the office of the day. Turn our hearts back to you, God our Savior, foremost by your heavenly teaching, so that we may truly profit by our Lenten observance. And this prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father Barbara. And thanks for reminding me, Kevin. That was great. Um, okay, so do y'all have your Haggadah? Oh, yeah, I was going to post it there. Uh, Kevin, do you have it? Can you post it in the chat? Yeah, I'll post it. Okay, moment. great. Oh, uh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I have it on the other computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let me post it. Apologies, everybody. No worries. Oops. I just did a direct message and so did everyone. Okay, there we go. There's the Haggadah. So you can pull it up. Well, there are parts we'll, that we'll be reading together. So actually, it'd be great if you kept yourself on mute. And then, because otherwise it's it's just too jumbled when we're all trying to speak at once over Zoom. So if you keep yourself on mute and then still say it all together, but just on mute, <laughs> that'd be great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so let me know when y'all have it. Who doesn't have it yet? Okay. So uh, did you see it in the chat? No. No. Um, are you looking at the chat? Uh, isn't the chat right next to? Oh, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm not looking. I'm not looking at it then. I can also, um, I send it in the email. So if that's easier to download from the email. No, I can't. Robin, can you share your screen or did you want your video to be visible? Yeah, I can share my screen. What a great idea. Okay, that's, yes, I can do that. Uh, okay. Um, share screen. This one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody. Okay. Is it too small for anyone? No, can you all see it? Yep, good, okay. All right, so. I just um, unmute myself. Can you make it a little bit bigger at all? Because I can't read it at all. Yes, I can definitely do that. Is that better? Yes, much better, thank you. 
Okay, perfect. Thanks for saying something. Uh, it'll make it wider too. What was that? If you get rid of the three pages on the left hand side of the screen, you can just go full screen. Oh, uh, yeah. Then you okay. can make it wider and make it easier to read. Uh, let's see. Like that? Is that what um, you're thinking? I'm re yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm reading it on my screen, but just for other people. Okay, great. All right. So, welcome to our interactive Seder. We're going to go through the essence of the Seder. So, I will note, I had the privilege of going to an Orthodox Jewish Passover Seder once, and we didn't start eating until midnight. Like, it was probably five hours long. So this is a very condensed version. Um, okay, so the essence of the Seder, the Kaddish, which is a blessing over the wine, the four questions, we were slaves, four children, plagues, Dainu, Pesach, Metz, uh, Matzah, Meor, and Halal. All in around 10 minutes. Hold on to your matzahs. Now we're going to bless the holiday of Passover together. So all together, Blessed is the maker of the fruit of the vine. We'll skip to English. Thank you for, thank you God for giving us festivals and seasons to rejoice and this festival of matzah to commemorate the exodus from Egypt. You have made us and our seasons of joy holy. So if y'all have, I am using juice. If y'all have your wine or juice, and if you don't, you can imagine drinking wine or juice. Let's pour our first cup. And I'm only going to pour a little bit because we're expected to drink the whole thing. So uh, in Jewish Passover Seders, they actually pour it to overflowing. But we're just, I'm just going to do a little bit. Okay. So drink the first cup. All right, let us recite the prayer thanking God that we have come together for the Seder. So all together, thank you God for bringing us to this time and place. And then, um, oh, I forgot because I wasn't reading my notes that I had marked on here. The first cup is, the meaning of it is I will bring you out, which comes from the Exodus a uh, passage that I put in the uh, background readings. Let me find it. Um, where is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Exodus 6, 6 through 7. Say, therefore, to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. That's cup one. And I will deliver you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment, and I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So that's what the four cups of wine symbolize that we'll be drinking tonight. Uh, we'll actually only drink three of them, but okay. So, um, and then after they drink the wine, they actually wash their hands. So that's why I asked you to grab a uh, paper towel so you can wet it and wash your hands so we get the experience. So I I really enjoy how the Hebrews are very like experiential in everything. So we get to experience the path over here. All right. Okay. So, um, all right. Now we'll recite the prayer for coming together. All together. Thank you, God, for bringing us to this time and place. And then the matzah. So this is where, actually, in the longer Seder, I have three matzahs in here. And in a Jewish tradition, 
The reason why there's three is because you always have two full loaves of bread with every Seder meal. And then with the middle one, we actually take it out and we break it. And then we hide the bigger piece. So it goes, the bigger piece gets wrapped in a cloth and gets hidden. And then at the end, this is called the afikomen. The kids find it and it's the dessert. The kid, whoever finds it gets a reward and that's the dessert. So I'm just gonna set it to the side. And then the piece that we broke goes in the middle. So what I think is cool about this is um, without them knowing it, just creating this tradition, we have Father, Son, Holy Spirit together. And we wrap them in a cloth. All right. So um, now I hold up the matzah. And what's also cool about the matzah is just the way that they make it these days. Um, it is striped and pierced like Jesus was, which is also just coincidentally cool. Um, okay, so this is a poor man's bread. I'm reading from our uh, liturgy here. That our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. All who are hungry, come and eat. All who are in distress, come share Passover with us. This year we are here, next year let's celebrate in Jerusalem. This year we are slaves, next year may we be free. Now I have four questions. So within the traditional Seder, four kids ask these questions. I'm gonna skip down to the uh, participant. So yeah, four different kids would ask this. What's up with the matzah? What's the deal with the horseradish? What's with the dipping of the herbs? What's with this whole chilling at the table business? So participants say together, we were slaves in Egypt. God lifted us out with awesome miracles. Had God not taken us out of Egypt, then what? We and our children and our children's children would still be slaves in Egypt. Therefore, if we were all wise people of understanding, all elders well-versed in the Torah, we would still be commanded to tell about the exodus from Egypt. All people who discuss the story of Passover at length are praiseworthy. I think it's funny that they added that in there, the at length, because um, this is the mini version. Okay, so the Torah reflects upon four types of kids, one wise, one evil, one simple, and one who doesn't know how to ask. Um, and real quick, does everyone know what the Torah is? Who knows what the Torah is? Great, I am glad I asked. So the, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible that were written by Moses. And it contains the law that the Jewish people live by. So that's what the Torah is. Okay, so the Torah talks about four different people. Guide the wise one through the obligations of Passover. Tell the evil one, we need you to be a part of our people. Explain to the simple one, with a strong hand, God brought us out of Egypt. Engage the one who doesn't know how to ask. Make the child feel comfortable and tell them about the Exodus. Okay, so now we pour our second glass of wine. This is the glass that represents, I will deliver you. And with the 10 plagues, we're actually gonna take our pinky finger. Oh, I need to put more juice in my glass. Um, we'll take our pinky finger and for each plague, we'll get a drop and put it on a plate or a napkin or something to represent each plague. So there are 10 plagues which God brought upon the Egyptians. Blood. And then uh, usually everyone says, like repeats it. So all the leader says blood and then everyone says blood. <laughs> so we'll do that with each of the plagues. Frogs, lice, wild beasts, disease, 
boils, hail and fire, locusts, darkness, death of the firstborn. All right, and then comes the song Dayenu. So y'all might have noticed in some of the songs that I played, they sang this song, or they mentioned the word Dayenu or sang the song Dai Dayenu. So um, they would sing this song at, at this point. And what it means is it would have been enough. Like had God just blessed us in this way, it would have been enough. Had but he didn't. He blessed us even more than that. Had he blessed us in just this way, it would have been enough. But he blessed us even more than that. And so I'm going to play a quick, um, so you can get the, the gist of the sound. I want to play a quick uh, uh, let me bring it over here. Just a little snippet. a lot longer than that but that is a gist of it and okay so let me go back to oh not that one this one all right um okay so then th these are just some of the things it's actually a really really long long passage long song where they're talking about all the blessings that god has given them we'll just go over a few here <laughs> so all together we'll just say it uh, if God had taken us out of Egypt and not punished our enemies, it would have been enough. If God punished our enemies and not part of the Red Sea, it would have been enough. If God brought us the Torah, but not brought us to Israel, it would have been enough. If God brought us to Israel, but didn't build a temple, it would have been enough. So every time it says it would have been enough, that's the word Dayenu. I might have read that too fast for y'all to read with me. Sorry. <laughs> Kevin is nodding strongly. Um, okay, so this Rabbi Gamliel would say, whoever does not discuss three things on Passover has not fulfilled their obligations. Pesach, which is the lamb, matzah, which is the unleavened bread, and moror, which is the bitter herbs. And those are the three things that God specifically tells us to eat on Passover. Oh, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. I've, I've said this in other calls that we've had, but I forgot to mention again that uh, on the night before Passover was like a rehearsal dinner. So the men would get together and do this rehearsal dinner of Passover. And then on Passover night, they would all be with their families. So Jesus and the disciples were doing the traditional rehearsal dinner of Passover the night before. Um, so that's why it's so similar to Passover, but not quite on Passover. And there's a lot of confusion around that because, because it's confusing. <laughs> but when you know the tradition, it's, it's less confusing. So, okay. Um, all right. So participants, let's say this together. Oh, imagine that this is a shank bone, a lamb's bone. <laughs> Use your imagination with me. So uh, Pesach is the sacrifice our ancestors would eat during the time of the temple because God passed over the houses of our ancestors in Egypt. So Jesus is our Passover lamb and both the Passover lamb and Jesus have to be eaten according to God's command. They, they no longer sacrifice lambs because the temple is no longer there. And God said, that's the only place where you can sacrifice the Passover lamb. So now most people eat chicken instead, but um, they still have a shank bone to remember. Um, okay, so now the matzah, this is matzah, because the dough of our, oh, let's read it together. 
Because the dough of our ancestors did not have time to rise before God redeemed them from Egypt. That's why we have matzah. And then the horseradish, the maror. So let's say together. Why do we eat it? Because the Egyptians oppressed our ancestors in Egypt. They made their lives bitter with hard labor, with mortar and bricks and other hardships. All right. So friends, in every generation, we need to feel like we had left Egypt. So now we need to thank and praise God for the miracles of the Exodus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for everything. So all together, blessed is the maker of the fruit of the vine. Let's drink our second cup. Wow, it's a lot of sugar. Okay. <laughs> um, so now in the traditional Passover feast, they wash their hands again and they say a blessing this time. Well, I don't have the blessing in front of me, so we can wash our hands again. And I also think that this is probably where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Because if we go to that passage, let me, um, how many of you have the passages in front of you? Okay, maybe I'll share my screen with that also. Uh, let me go down to it. Okay. Um, share a different screen. Oh, I guess I could have brought it over. But, ah, okay. Uh, this one. All right. Um, is that big enough? Can does anybody need to make it bigger? Make it bigger? Yes. Okay. Let me do that. Is that big enough? Yes. Thank you. Nope. Okay. A little bit bigger. How about that? All right. Great. Okay. So washing of the feet. Um, what would be the best? Does somebody want to read this for us? That way I'm not doing all the talking. <laughs> or should I just read it? I can read it. Okay. Great. Jesus knew that the night before the Passover would be his last night on earth before leaving this world to return to the Father's side. All throughout his time with his disciples, Jesus had demonstrated a deep and tender love for them, and now he longed to show them the full measure of his love. Before their evening meal had begun, the accuser had already deeply embedded betrayal in the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now Jesus was fully aware that the Father had placed all things under his control, for he had come from God and was about to go back to be with him. So he got up from the meal and took off his outer robe and took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' dirty feet and dry them with his towel. But when Jesus got to Simon Peter, he objected and said, I can't let you wash my dirty feet. You're my Lord. Jesus replied, you don't understand yet the meaning of what I'm doing, but soon it will be clear to you. Peter looked at Jesus and said, you'll never wash my dirty feet, never. But Jesus, but, P but Peter, if you don't allow me to wash your feet, Jesus responded, then you will not be able to share life with me. Peter said, Lord, in that case, don't just wash my feet, wash my hands and my head too. Jesus said to him, you are already clean. You've been washed completely and just need 
your feet to be clean, cleansed. But that can't be said of all of you, for Jesus knew which one was about to betray him. And that's why he told them that not all, not all of them were clean. After washing their feet, he put his robe on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I just did? Jesus said, you called me your teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is who I am. So if I'm your teacher and Lord and have just washed your dirty feet, then you should follow the example that I've set for you and wash one another's dirty feet. Now do for each other what I have just done for you. I speak to you timeless truth. A servant is not superior to his master, and an apostle is never greater than the one who sent him. Now put into practice what I have done for you, and you will experience a life of happiness enriched with untold blessings. Okay. I I moved the last three verses of or the first three verses from the next section up okay. to the end because I, I didn't like when I was reading over this, I didn't like the page break or the paragraph break that they did. So will you continue through 20? Sure. I don't refer to all of you when I tell you these things, for I know the ones I've chosen to fulfill the scripture that says, the one who shared supper with me treacherously betrays me. I'm telling you this now before it happens so that when the prophecy comes to pass, you will listen, comes to pass, you will be convinced that I am. Listen to this timeless truth. Whoever receives the messenger I send receives me. And the one who receives me receives the father who sent me. Awesome. So if you will take that wet towel and wipe your feet, because I think this is where Jesus wiped the feet of the disciples. Um, let's see, we have about 10 minutes before we need to go over the next set of passages. Does anybody real quickly have, um, contemplation that they want to share for this one? I, um, I guess since I'm not muted, I'll keep talking. Um, I actually kind of struggled with contemplating today, even though I spent a fair amount of time doing it. This was about the only thing I got out of the whole day was that verse 20 um, that just kind of reminded me of elsewhere in the gospel. Where verse 20 is, listen to this timeless truth. Whoever receives the messenger I send receives me, and so on. And that just reminded me of whatever you do to the least of those among you that you do for me. Mm. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. I guess we'll, uh, all right. Well, let's go back to the, oh, Father Barbara, do you have a comment? Oh, you're on mute. You're on, yeah, you're on mute. I'll start sharing my screen while he's unmuting himself. Uh, I still can't hear you, though it doesn't say you're muted anymore. Talk you can again. hear me? Oh, there we go. Got it. That in the, in John's gospel, the Washing of the feet is actually substituted for the institution of the Eucharist. Mm. There's no institution of the Eucharist in the Last Supper in John. He substitutes the washing of the feet for that. And why did he do that? Well, it's hard to know. He gave a great deal of the teaching of the about the Eucharist in chapter six 
of his gospel. So he didn't repeat that at the Last Supper. But mm. there is another aspect of what he was saying. He was saying that it is much the importance of service of others is emphasized enormously strongly in that. And I think Raymond Brown makes this point. There's, if people are fighting over who should perform the Eucharist, who can perform the Eucharist, can women perform the Eucharist, etc. He said that people should be fighting for the privilege to wash people's feet, to serve mm. the poor. And mm. that's the point that's made in the in the substitution of the washing of the feet for the actual institution of the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. The Eucharist is very important, it's a central sacrament of the church, but it's empty unless it's linked in with the washing of the feet, as it were, the service of others, particularly the lowly ones. And that, I think, is a very important point, and the point that I reflected upon and prayed about yesterday and today, that the importance of service and the importance of seeking service, that let us fight about the right to wash people's feet rather than who's going to preside the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, Matt reflection and your reflection go hand in hand. Um, okay, I'm gonna keep going here. So, uh, blessed is the maker of bread. Blessed is God who commanded us to eat matzah. And then everyone eats the matzah. So if you have uh, crackers or whatever, you can do that now. Or you can imagine eating matzo. Eat a biscuit. No. Okay. And then, blessed is God who commands us to eat maror. And then everyone dip your cracker into the horseradish. My, I, my roommate actually got this for me. He was going to the store and I told him it's because it's supposed to make you cry during the Passover to remember the slavery and the bitterness and all that. So if he got extra hot, I haven't tried it yet. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is really hot. <laughs> um, yeah, it's making me cry. Uh, so this is where um, it traditionally, at the Passover meal, they would actually dip the matzah in the bitter herbs and then pass it to somebody across the table. So this is where um, Judas, the situation with Judas would have happened. Let me, let me bring it over to this one. Okay. So does somebody want to read the situation with Judas? Jesus passes the dip matzah. I can read? Or I, yeah, go for it. Okay, Jesus. I have it on the Passing. screen. Okay. Uh, I don't refer to all of you when I tell you these things. Oh, we oh, already read you, that. Will you skip from, down? Yeah, to 21. 21. Then Jesus was moved deeply in his spirit. Looking at his disciples, he announced, I tell you the truth. One of you is about to betray me. Eyeing each other, his disciples puzzled over which one of them could do such a thing. The disciple that Jesus dearly loved was at the right of him at the table and was leaning his head on Jesus. Peter gestured to this disciple to ask Jesus who it was he was referring to. 
Then the dearly loved disciple leaned into Jesus's chest and whispered, Master, who is it? The one I give this piece of bread to after I've dipped it in the bowl, Jesus replied. Then he dipped the piece of bread into the bowl and handed it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. And when Judas ate the piece of bread, Satan entered him. And Jesus looked at Judas and said, what you are planning to do, go do it now. None of those around the table realized what was happening. Some thought that Judas, their trusted treasurer, was being told to go buy what was needed for the Passover celebration, or perhaps to go give something to the poor. So Judas left quickly and went out into the dark night to betray Jesus. So does anyone, uh, did anyone do that as a contemplation? Do you have anything you would like to share? Um, actually, it was not very long, but when I read that, uh, what struck me was the statement that when Judas ate the piece of bread, Satan entered him. And it just, it was kind of, you know, shocking to me. But uh, what I was uh, reflecting on is uh, comparing it to receiving Holy Communion. Um, mm. It means, you know, People can receive Holy Communion, but unless you receive it, wanting it, and you're ready for it, it's not going to give you, you know, Jesus said, when you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have life everlasting, and you'll never be hungry, you'll never be thirsty. Yes, but that's if you actually open yourself to receive that grace. And so it's like, you know, Judas received communion, but he did, that's, he did not receive life. In, instead, the exact opposite, it says, you know, Satan entered him. So he was not even protected against falling prey to Satan just right after receiving communion. Yeah, well, yeah, th this is actually communion is a little bit later and we'll go over that. Um, but yeah, it that's a really good reflection with after receiving the bread with the bitter herbs that Jesus handed him. It is there is a parallel there with the communion that Jesus gives them too. Yeah. That, yeah, that is interesting. That's I great. Think it's a very, I think it's a very apt reflection and a reflection which isn't often made. Mm -hmm. that the disposition with which one approaches the sacraments are crucial to receiving yeah. them. One interesting thing, I've noticed in San Ro not San Roque, but in San Rafael, Rafael's, is that after communion, you see people going off to the Blessed Sacrament or genuflecting as they passed it. I think it would be a beautiful custom if people genuflected to one another after they've received communion, that mm. they are now, they become tabernacle of Christ. Mm. It's a neat idea. Yeah. I and think too, sorry, I beg your pardon. Ahead. I think also there's a nice touch of irony in this that the translations that you've given is that the trusted treasurer, of course, that was describing Judas, and Judas was anything but a tr trusted treasurer. He was seen as a trusted tre treasurer, but Ironically, because he wasn't at all to be trusted at all. Also, I think in this scene, enter the, the beloved disciple. He's the one who had won up on Peter all the time. <laughs> Peter wasn't, wasn't near enough to the Lord to put the question to him. He had to put it through the beloved disciple when they went to the high priest's house. The Peter and John got in because John, the beloved disciple, knew someone there. And right mm -hmm. through this passage of the Passion, you get John, the beloved disciple, being getting one up on Peter. And that is often described and explained by the fact that the beloved disciple was a significant disciple 
in one in the Joannine community, the community from which John's gospel came. He wasn't a big noise in the, you might say the Petrine group, the group around Jesus in Nazareth and in Bethany or, or in Galilee. He wasn't a big noise in that group, but he was a very big noise in the other group. And that other group wanted to push him out more and more and hence push him, I mean by that not push him away, but make him more prominent. And they did that by having these little vignettes where he comes off better than Peter each time. It's mm. not a very edifying story in many ways, but it seems to bring out the reality that this disciple was an exceptional fellow, but within a certain community, not exceptional in the community closest to Jesus in Galilee. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And sorry, my I, I totally missed the point that you were making in my jump to that wasn't communion by saying like how we receive it really matters. And yeah, that's really good. And I, I totally agree with you. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me here was uh, then Jesus was deeply moved in the spirit. And so like when during the Seder, um, at each step, when they're eating the matzah, they do that for a while. When they're eating the bitter herbs, they do that for a while. So I think it was like, while Jesus was eating it, I'm, I was imagining it was bringing up, the bitterness of the horseradish was bringing to mind Jesus' betrayal. And that was kind of like what prompted him to, like, to be deeply moved in his spirit and bring up the betrayal. and. Um, and then there is that tradition where they pass it to somebody. So it wasn't an awkward thing actually for him to pass it. Um, okay, so let's continue. And let's, yeah, let's continue. Um, let's see, where were we? Horseradish, okay. So, and then we combine the Passover offering, the matzah, the mor together in a sandwich and eat them to fulfill the words of Torah. They shall eat it with matzah and bitter herbs. And so they, within the traditional Passover Seder, they have this apple, this really sweet apple dish that they make. And they put the bitter herbs and the apple into a sandwich with the matzah. So can make a little sandwich which the with everything and um and they eat that and the the sweetness of the apple mixture is supposed to represent um uh shoot <laughs> what was it i think this like the su sweetness of the coming redemption or of the coming freedom um in there and what it made me think of related to Jesus having this sweet sandwich that, well, with the horseradish in there too, with the bitterness in there too, right after Judas left to betray him, was thinking about, it made me think of that verse, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross and he scorned its shame. And like afterwards he was sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. And so the sweetness of the apple made me think of, for that joy set before him, he redeemed us and he was reunited with the father and sitting at his right hand. So we can enjoy our, our bitter herb apple sandwich. <laughs> this bitter herb is super strong. Oh, man. Okay. Um, okay. So then they would eat the Passover meal. And, and then it's not in this Seder, 
but I, I actually pulled up, this is a Jewish Seder, by the way, a Jewish Haggadah is what they call the liturgy. So it's a Jewish Haggadah. I pulled up another Jewish Haggadah to see exactly when they do the stuff with the Afikomen. So right here, after the Passover meal is eaten, then they go find the Afikomen, which is the dessert. So some can would go and find Jesus wrapped in a cloth that was hidden, and he'll get a prize for finding him. And um, and then this is the dessert of the meal. So we pull out our afikomen, and this is actually where Jesus says, um, then he lifted up a loaf and after praying a prayer of thanksgiving to God, he gave each of the apostles a piece of bread saying, this is my body, which is now being offered to you. Always eat it to remember me. So this is that with the afikomen, this is actually what he used to um, do communion. And then he handed it around and they all ate of the afikomen, which is, yeah. So everyone eats the dessert, which is lots of bread. <laughs> um, did anyone do a reflection on, on that passage? I didn't, but um, what I thought about earlier when you took the centerpiece out and broke it in two and hid Jesus somewhere and then put that other piece back between the two you said that was the father son and holy spirit which i hadn't thought of but i also it made me think of jesus broken between the two other thieves on the cross mm. you have his humanity in one spot i mean not that they're separated but the, and then his divinity and then we are consuming it for dessert his divinity that's how we receive him that's awesome i love that that's really cool hmm and initially, before you mentioned that between the two thieves of the cross, I was thinking that the, the three stacked together represented his divinity aspect. And the one that was laid in the cloth would be his humanity aspect. Hmm. But it works both ways. Yeah. That's cool. Um, okay. I have another reflection, but I want to keep going because we're running out of time. Um, so the third cup of wine. All right. Um, oh, let me go back to the. Uh, right. So this is where they eat the afi komen, and then now we drink the third cup of wine. So let's pour ourselves. So this is the um, cup of redemption, which so some some. Jewish site said cup of praise, some said cup of redemption, some, some said cup of marriage, some, some said cup of consummation. But so they all have to do with redeeming. Oh, I'm sorry. Forget that. It was, um, this is just the cup of redemption. The fourth cup is praise, marriage, or consummation. Forget that. Forget I just said anything. This is the cup of redemption. <laughs> And it is connected with Exodus where it says, I will redeem you. And, um, okay, let's go to, so from Matthew. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, which we just did. We said, blessed is the maker of the fruit of the vine, saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So let's drink the, the cup of redemption. Um, there was, I found this Jewish, when I was looking at a different Jewish Haggadah, 
something that stuck out to me with uh, this third cup of wine is it was talking about up until now. They, so this, the whole feeling of the Seder shifts at this point because up until now, they're focused on the past. And at this point going forward, they're looking towards the future when the Messiah will come and truly liberate them. And so it's just cool that even Jews today are um, recognize this third cup of wine with the Messiah liberating them, truly liberating them. And um, so it's just extra special that this was the cup that Jesus used to say, this is the my blood. So did anyone do a reflection on that passage? Anyone? Nope. Okay. Um, all right. So then, then they sing a hymn together. So let's go back to the, where is it? Right. So they drink the third cup and then they sing the halal. And the halal is using Psalm 113 through 118. And I just, I pulled out a song that I wanted to just play a snippet of for you. This is from Psalm 118, and it's in Hebrew, but the translation is on the screen. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it. Real, real quick, I want to point out that salvation is uh, Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua. Um, which is also Jesus. Jesus's Hebrew name is Yeshua, which literally translated is salvation. So you'll notice that in this song. Heaven mahasu habonim, haita le rosh pina. Meet Adonai, haita so. Okay, so I I just um, if we take Psalm one eighteen verses fourteen and fifteen and twenty one through twenty two and just put Yeshua in where it says salvation. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my Yeshua. Glad songs of Yeshua are in the tents of righteousness. Of, uh, sorry, in the tents of the righteous. I thank you that you have answered me and become my, and have become my Yeshua. The stone the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. I just think that's beautiful. Um, anyway, so uh yeah so that that was they would sing that song and then the seder is not over so within the passover seder they have a fourth cup they say blessed is the maker of the fruit of the vine and so i would like us to pour the fourth cup but not drink it so the hebrews would have expected them to drink a fourth cup they all would have expected this and Jesus puts it down and says, I'm not drinking of the fruit of the vine again. What did he say? I tell you, I'll not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. So let's just set it aside. We'll come back to this tomorrow, actually. The fourth cup. The Yeah, so that the fourth cup is the one of... Um, marriage, consummation, praise, the different people translate differently, but it comes from Exodus where it says, I will take you to be my people. So Jesus doesn't drink it yet. We'll save it for tomorrow. Um, and then Jesus predicts, so they go back to the Mount of Olives. They sing a hymn, go back to the Mount of Olives. And then Jesus predicts Peter's denial who would like to read that real fast? Uh, 
Um, I guess I will. Okay. Peter, my dear friend, listen to what I'm about to tell you. Satan has obtained permission to come and sift you all like wheat and test your faith. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that you would stay faithful to me no matter what comes. Remember this. After you have turned back to me and have been restored, make it your life mission to strengthen the faith of your brothers. But Lord, Peter replied, I'm ready to stand with you to the very end, even if it means prison or death. Jesus looked at him and prophesied, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will deny me three times that you ever knew me. So did anyone do a reflection on that last one? Oh, did you have anything you wanted to share? That chokes me up and tears come to my eyes. Mm. That's great. You were able to get into it experientially. Yeah. So um, we are over time, <laughs> just barely. Um, let me go through tomorrow's exercises real fast. And so day seven is the crucifixion and the burial. So I, in the background readings, mentioned how the shepherd gets strike. They strike the shepherd and the sheep scatter. And then the fulfillment of that. And um, Jesus is the Passover lamb, the lamb requirements. And how Jesus meets those requirements. And then none of it can remain till morning. No broken bones. It was uh, in the prophecy about being pierced and how Jesus fulfills that. There's a little thing here on which veil was torn in the temple. Um, there's a debate about that. Uh, and the fourth cup. And then the passages, lots of passages. Um, the Garden of Gethsemane. The betrayal and the arrest. Jesus before Caiaphas, Peter's denial. Jesus mocked and beaten. And then before the Sanhedrin. And then before Pilate. And then before Herod and back to Pilate. And then, um, you know, Barabbas gets released, Jesus sends to death, Simon bears the cross, Jesus spoke to the wailing women, Jesus on the cross, and then a few different things while he's on the cross, and then he's buried. So that will be our contemplation reflections for tomorrow. So I hope. I hope you enjoyed our little mini Seder. And they, um, anyone have any questions, comments? Oh, I do. Yes, can you hear me? Yes. I opened a bottle of Manischewitz. That's the wine I wanted to use tonight. After I opened it, I noticed it said, do not use for Passover. Oh. Why? I wonder why. I don't know. I'll have to Google that. Yeah. Well, Father Barbara, are you still there? I can't see you. Is he? You're on mute also. Um, I can't tell if he's here or not. Would anyone like to pray us out? Any takers? Or hi, was was this uh, helpful going through the Passover Seder? How did y'all like it that? It was it was definitely I felt rushed, uh, but I uh, really appreciate you putting this together and and taking the time to to walk us through it. Yeah. Did it help bring some more, um, I don't know, depth to what happened at the Last Supper? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father Barbie, you are there. I saw your head pop out. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, I can see him. I wonder if you can hear us. Oh, there you are. You unmuted yourself. 
Are you there? Yes, with your help. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Will you pray us out? Certainly. Let us pray in thanksgiving for this evening. It is strange for me to be drinking wine at two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock. But it was a very rewarding sort of experience and to link up the Jewish festivities with the Christian festivities and how they actually blend with one another very neatly. I thank the Lord for the insights and even more than the insights, the emotional involvement with the Jewish festivities. I thank the Lord for the great work that Robin put into gathering this together for us and for the various contributions people made, all of them very rewarding, very strengthening and consoling. Oh Lord, we thank you for all these things and the many blessings that have come to us from them. And we make this prayer as always through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Well, thank you all for joining me for our last supper. So I, do we yeah. leave the wine out? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if, if you didn't have a glass of wine or juice, um, I would encourage you to pour one and leave it out because we'll come back to that tomorrow. You can leave it in the fridge if you want, if whatever, <laughs> but. <laughs> um, so thank y'all. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Robin, I just want to say, uh, I, I hope you, I said it was rushed and I understand that there's a lot of material there. So um, what I, all I meant by that was that um, there was a lot to think about. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's so. really a lot to it. it. If you can join a long passive or Seder, I'd highly recommend it. It's like, it's just so beautiful and experiential. And I don't know, I, I feel more deeply connected with Jesus through celebrating the passive or Seder. So if you can find one, I'd really recommend it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, Father Barbara, you're outside the screen. I can't see your face. You can't see my face, no can I, so we share that. Oh, there, <laughs> I can see you now. You can see me now. Yes. I, it hasn't improved my vision of myself, I would like to say. I don't know what's happening. Mm. Yeah, you're very bright. Oh, we can stop the recording. Yes. Thank you.